wanted to go through the motor controllers in a little bit more depth. Uh, we went through them previously with Dan at Logicam. Um, we didn't open up this panel, I don't believe, uh, and we didn't pull any of these out because we did this on a live machine. Dan was poking around with a <laughs> knife blade, pointing out the things, so that was uh, kind of exciting. But uh, I want to pull some of these cards out and have a look at what they are um, so that we can see what sort of technology is in there. I haven't looked up the data sheet to see what the pinouts are on these yet, so purely looking at the ICs um, and what sort of technology there is. This is a 1990s machine, I believe this machine is 1997. Yeah, it's 1997, so this machine was absolute state of the art at, in 1990s when it was created. Um, everything's labeled in German, uh, being a Siemens machine. So we have the motor power supply, I believe that is. Uh, motor, motor supply board or motor power board. Um, sorry, no, that's the motor power board. That's the ballast board for the motors. Um, all of these, I believe, are identical. Just looking through the sides at them, they all look to be exactly the same. So these are your small motor drivers. Um, and I'm not sure if these perhaps do multiple motors as well. Um, this is Z-axis for the IC head. Um, I think that's rotation for the IC head. Um, this is star head. Um, uh, SP group being star head. Uh, this is the Z-axis for star head. So again, very small motor. Um, the DP1 and 2, these are the rotational ones, which we saw in the previous, or in the star head video. If you're interested in more about how the star head works, I've got a video on that. Um, and then the interesting ones are the ones down here. So the y-axis, uh, and I'm gonna have a look at this, because this is the crash board. <laughs> I don't know what a crash board is. Um, we've got a brake board, and we've got a y-axis board. We've got an x-axis brake and motor controller. These ones, I'm a, hoping are gonna be a lot beefier. They look a little bit different to these ones, because uh, this is a, this is gonna be controlling the big motor. Um, so the big motor is the one around here. Apologies for the bad lights. I normally have a big video light, but I'm not sure where that's gotten to. Um, I've pulled the cover off this one, or the, the guide plate off this one. So this is a 104 volt, five newton meter, uh, 15 amp, but it'll max out at 88 amp, 2700 RPM, um, fully encoded motor. So that motor is from here all the way down to here uh, where the bottom part is its encoder. So it has an integrated encoder. Uh, the T5 belt is built onto it. Normally there's a guide plate there for pushing the feeders in on. Um, so there's a guide plate there on this one. I've just removed that, hence the tools over there. Um, because this, as I covered in my previous one on the uh, Steppers is a completely separate unit which weighs a couple hundred kilos and gets forklifted in. So those plastic pieces here are to guide that plate in. Um, these are just power and signal for the um, feeders. So let's have a little look down here at what we've got. We've got some transformers. I don't know what they're for. Uh, there's a set of fans back there. Perhaps they're for those fans. Um, I haven't looked into the service manuals deeply enough. Uh, let's start with one of the regular heads. So this is a standard IC head. Uh, we've got some international rectifier 640s on there, um, which is those four FETs or transistors. I'm not sure what those are specifically. Um, a bunch of old through-hole electronics. <laughs> Fairly large cap, 470, 200 uh, volt. Um, this is the standard connector. All of these have a backplane connector in there um, with their own little black box thing. <laughs> Don't know what those are. I haven't got to that yet. Um, they've got a nice ceramic fuse in there and a little board for doing adjustments of, I'm guessing, current drive speed, something like that. Uh, again, I haven't looked through the service manual, so this is just looking at the electronics. Lots and lots of MELF parts on the back. There's like all of these resistors look like they're all MELF. This thing must be a complete pain to assemble. 
So this is relatively early SMT parts. Um, and based on the amount of paste on them, they've all been put through a wave solder process. So yeah, lots of little resistors and capacitors, even a few diodes. Uh, but that is a motor control board. Um, so I'm looking to, at the moment, completely replace these on the open PMP list. There's a uh, very nice looking motor controller which is running on a Cypress PSOC, um, which is specifically for DC servo motors. I'm going to put a link to that in the description. Um, I believe the guy's name is Gino who's doing that. Uh, he's going to be doing a crowd supply campaign for that soon. So worth checking out. Um, looking at these, yup, basically the same other than the dust bunnies. Uh, there must be a value added extra. Keep in mind, this machine's been running for 20 odd years um, and it's got fan blasting up into it. Yup, same, lots of dust bunnies. That must uh, build up a bit of static on there, I guess, because that's quite attractive for the dust bunnies. Alrighty, uh, I'm going to say all of those are indeed the same. Uh, so let's have a look at the x-axis, which is going to be the small motor. So this is the motor which is on the gantry. Um, it's quite small. I'll show you where that one is. So up here we have the motor which runs the gantry. And that's in there. So that's its encoder. Uh, that's its drive, which is going to a belt reduction. Um, so it's actually easier to see it from here. So this is the motor itself. Uh, it's not big, it's just a DC motor. I'm pretty sure that this, even, this isn't even a quadrature encoder. I'm pretty sure this is just a single pulse. It's yeah, old technology. So back down here, we're back at the uh, motor controllers. So yeah, this is definitely a much beefier driver with a lot more dust on it. Huge, huge heatsink. Um, yeah, so we've got a thousand microfarad cap on there, same voltage. Um, bunch of IRF 640s on that side of the heat spreader and a bunch more on this side of the heat spreader. So looks like they might just doubling up the um, the number of diodes there. And that is actually looks like just a giant brick of aluminium here, which then goes onto the heat sink as thermal mass. And I'm guessing that's just going to be some sort of thermal fuse. Um, so if that block of metal gets too hot, it's going to trip and stop the motors. Uh, what else have we got in here? Some those variable inductors, tunable inductors. Uh, other than that, it looks like it's got fairly similar components to the other driver boards. Um, yeah, it looks like it's basically the same design, just with a whole lot more fets. Uh, what'd be interesting to see is if I put these two back to back. Is the layout the same? Yeah, I'd say that uh, the layout for these two boards looks at first glance to be completely identical. Uh, even down to having the same screw holes except this one just has the screws mounted onto this little plate and you can see that you've got this is one side of the bridge and that's the other side of the bridge i'm guessing because uh on the bigger motor controller you've got another set of fets there and there with all of these being vertical so on the back of this board yeah we've got blank spots for an extra set of fets on there so they're using exactly the same control boards just with more fets and a way bigger heatsink so that's actually really good to know that all of these motors are taking the same signals in. Um, put that one back. And no, I'm not being ESD safe. I'm just touching everything. Because <laughs> that's how I like to roll. So that's the 
x-axis, so that's the smaller axis of the two. Um, let's put that one back into its slot, lock it in. Uh, so we've got a break. Wow, big break. I'm guessing all of these holes along here are for all of those resistors. And so the x-axis clearly doesn't need a break. It's interesting, we've got some uh, STBTW69 800s. I believe those are SCRs. So they're a silicon controlled, silicon controlled rectifier. Uh, basically a diode with a gate on it to turn it on and off. Not sure what else we've got there. But yeah, so that's a brake controller, or a brake board at least. Um, so that's the x-axis one. Oops, didn't get that in the slot correctly. There we go. Uh, this is the y-axis one. So, y-axis, nothing down the bottom here. Uh, but yeah, lots of, well, not even lots of, because there's still holes for more resistors there. So a bunch of 1 ohm resistors, and again the SCRs, so they could have a lot more resistors put onto this board, but I guess they don't need it. Um, so let's see, this motor controller, ooh this has the big fats in it. So all of the others have been IRF 640s, uh, this is using a... IRF or sorry there's too much dust on there for me to make that out properly so there's an IRF P250 much bigger package um, and again we've got some sort of thermal sensor I'm guessing there um, and then more FETs, four more FETs down the inside there uh, same interesting little board sticking up here which wasn't on the smaller controllers um, so I guess that's why this footprint looks this way because you can see the three smaller holes in there for the uh, TO263 packages but again same motor controller um, same hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of passes on there Be interesting to look up the chips which are on the front of these so anyway uh, that is your motor control system for the Siemens Seaplace uh, F3. Uh, which we haven't looked at is these boards up here. We've got a mm, power supply? I think that's this power supply. My German's not very good. Um, yeah, so fairly basic power supply. Not sure what it's doing exactly. We've got a. If I took this top cover off, I'd have a better idea, obviously, but I don't. So, uh, a whole bunch of caps. Nothing too interesting at all on there. Um, keep in mind that these motors are pretty much, I believe, all running on about 100 volts. Um, there's some pretty serious speed happening there. Uh, ballast board. A whole bunch of 68 ohm resistors. And what is that? Ah, it's our friend, the IRF250 from the um, Y axis motor controller. So I'm guessing that's just a big brake of some sort. Maybe for e stopping the whole machine, perhaps. Again, I haven't read the service manual yet, so I don't know. Uh, and then we have a whole bunch of power here, which has got... Uh, are these going to come off? The DIN rail? No. Uh, so we've got 80 volt, 55 amp. I'm guessing that's going to be the uh, Y-axis motor. And then we've got 8 volt, 12 volt... Oh, sorry, no, it's not 55 amp, 55 volt. Sorry, my mistake. Um, 8 volt, 55 volt, 12 volt, 55 volt, 30 volt. 
So I'm guessing these are all our motor controllers. There's a couple of big caps in there. This one doesn't have any caps at all. This one has a big cap at least. Two big caps. That one has no caps. That one has two big caps. Uh, and then a little board on the end here with more big resistors. So, uh, keep in mind this machine runs internally on 440 volt uh, AC, I believe. There's a big transformer in there somewhere. Um, on the other side of the machine, on the other side of this panel, I believe, there's a big transformer. Um, so yeah, that's what it looks like. Let's go into a manual focus mode. Let's go auto focus again. There we go. So they're the voltages which we're looking at on this machine. Um, and interesting little board. It'll be interesting to see what's behind all of this as well in a later video. Thanks for watching.